Hey, it's Tony. Um, ISTE 2015 is done now and I'm in my hotel room. Uh, really tired because I presented two times today and was up way later than I should have been fine-tuning. But I, I took some pictures at ISTE and I thought I would just go through them as a way to kind of review what happened. Um, also, I did a lot of periscoping from ISTE, but there were times when I wasn't live or the connection didn't work. So let's check it out. Get teaching, you're, you're playing awesome too. Uh, so I picked up my bag and conference bags always have so much paper in them, but, but the ISTE had a great conference app. So uh, <laughs> this is the first thing I did. It was about 10 steps away from the registration booth that there was a recycle bin. So that was good. I took all the paper out and recycled it and I'll, I'll take the, the bag back home and figure out a use for that too. <laughs> Um, really, a lot of my pictures, most of my pictures from ISTE really are just pictures with people who are my friends. Uh, many of them I've met before at previous conferences, and some of them are people that I know online but met for the first time. So this is the Fryer family, and I just saw uh, Wes and Shelley last week at, uh, at a conference in Tucson, so it was neat to see them again. And at ISTE, there, there are people who you never ever see. Um, I wanted to see Nathan Steven so badly and I never ran into him. And then there are other people that uh, you just see again and again. And, and Shelly Fryer was one I kept running into. It was great to see her. I liked it. And, and I will miss being at Slide to Learn this year. Um, Slide to Learn is a great conference that's in Australia. It'll be in Hobart this time. Um, and But I, I, I'm booked for other days. I'm so sad it didn't work out, but uh, we'll, we'll be there with the slide, the number two learn hashtag. Uh, there's, there's Judy Epke. She's great. She's in Illinois, and we've, we usually end up uh, having lunch together during an ISTE, so that was fun to, to see. People, people did recognize me. I go home and my family doesn't, I don't think they quite understand it, and I don't understand it either, but I've just been around ed tech long enough that, that people know uh, who I am, I guess. Um, there's Kristen Brooks, and uh, she's in Georgia, and I'll see her at, her at the GAETC conference uh, in November. And uh, I had dinner with her and, and, the, and, this, and the, um, all the staff from her school a few years ago, and we reminisced about that dinner every time we see each other. <laughs> Let's see, oh, I had never met Casey Bell before. Um, Casey Bell is Shake Up Learning. Um, you've probably seen her stuff, it's really nice and colorful and she has an, an, a cartoon avatar. I mean, who would have a cartoon avatar of all things? But, uh, <laughs> uh, yep, at Shake Up Learning. And sometimes I guess you, I think, like cartoon avatar, you know, they won't really look like their avatar. And she's she's even she's even cuter in person than than, than she is in in her cartoon. She just it, it has a southern accent and is just really great and knowledgeable. And she has great stuff. And if you haven't heard of her, you you definitely will be. And then here's Andy Mann. And yeah, Ryan. A lot of people don't know what Casey really looks like. So that was that it was just so great to see her in person. Andy and I go way back to the Palm Pilot days, and he had me come out to his uh, his uh, service unit in Michigan, and we uh, did uh, some handheld conferences, uh, mobile conferences back in the early 2000s, and it was I was just really thankful for him that over the years of, of inviting you know this young Nebraska teacher to Michigan to to speak at conferences and keynote conferences was is pretty amazing to me, and I think really helped helped me. Um, be where I am today. Um, all right, first one in the in the comments. Who is that? Talk about talk about photogenic. Yep, Aaron Klein. Yep, Klein Aaron on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She she's so pleasant to, to in person. We joked, and maybe you even saw it on Periscope when I did the one from the Bloggers Cafe. She <laughs> she always has a kind of a serious face when she's not smiling. It's just her regular face, but uh, we always take a serious picture. But this was this was our smiley our smiley picture. 
and if if, if you don't um, know her stuff, she's she's uh, really into interior design and classroom design and physical spaces and making them brain based. You should look up Erin Klein's work if you're if you're not familiar with it. Let's see what else. Oh, there's another one with Judy. And uh, this is Wendy Wells. She was so nice to come around the the poster sessions with me, and she was just had no idea what Periscope was, and and uh, well, <laughs> neither did I really when we began. And I really liked walking around and having somebody to talk to. This is this is my first broadcast where it's just me. Usually, uh, interviewing somebody or somebody's with me, so um, just me and and twenty nine people in the chat, so that's that's handy too. <laughs> She is. I love her southern accent. Wendy and I go back to the Palm Pilot days too, and she uh, she had a conference in, in South Carolina that she invited me out to, and and that was a good time. And we've kept in touch over the years. And she's ready to get back and, and doing more ed tech stuff. She's um, kind of like me, and she uh, is self employed now. She's worked for a district for a while, and um, so now on Twitter she's the Wendy Wells. I convinced her to change her Twitter name. Uh, she, <laughs> it was like Wendy Wells EdTech without a C or something. Um, so we talked at lunch and she, she changed it over. So it's the Wendy Wells, which is easier to say and spell. It's great. Um, yeah, walking around uh, the, the really loud rooms at ISTE, I'm glad I had that microphone, the, the iRig HD. Um, and then it also let me keep the microphone on, at, next to somebody's mouth, but I could pan across the crowd. I could zoom into things and you could hear them just fine. So that microphone was really essential to what I did over ISTE. Um, and if you, if you want to see it on Amazon, the, the, my Amazon link for it is tonyv.me slash microphone. And I can tell through an Amazon report that a couple of people already bought the microphone. It's a really good one. It sounds great. I'm not using it right now because I'm not in a loud environment. Um, it's just my quiet. Um, is it compatible with all smartphones? It, it, has, it has a lightning uh, connection, but it also has a uh, micro USB connection. Um, so I, I would look at the, the Amazon specs, but I think if your phone has a micro USB connection, it's fine. Um, but you might have to get a different cord. I don't know, it's ma mainly made for, for iPhones. It, it would work with an iPad as well. So, so there's, uh, there's Wendy, uh, and we, I, I, I guess I could recap our whole conversation we had at lunch the other day about trying, about what, what, what things she could do on Twitter, but, the, but getting a, a new name. And when she changed her name on Twitter, because she was really worried about this, so you, you keep your followers, you change your username on, on Twitter, you keep your followers, you keep who you're following, you keep your profile picture, it's just your username that changes. So she was relieved by that. But then I told her to go back and register her old um, username under a different email, just so nobody else takes it, and then she can redirect people to that. So, um, oh, people are saying nice things on Twitter, even. Well, that's cool. Appreciate that. So, <laughs> Wendy and I were walking home uh, late from a, a party one night, and this is this is right off the street, and I, you may not be able to see what it is. I had to take a picture of it because I thought it was ridiculous. So, uh, it's called Dental Arts, <laughs> and um, can you imagine going to the dentist? And just there's a window where everybody could see in. I mean, at night it's easier to see inside, but you're just facing everybody. Everybody can see your mouth gaping open. I, I just thought that was funny as we're walking down the streets of Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, Ryan, say ah. <laughs> um, I when I go to conferences, I don't often go to the exhibit hall. It's kind of overwhelming, but. Uh, I wanted to go through mostly because I wanted to maybe broadcast from some of the cool booths. And I got a chance to, though most of that place, every vendor had their own Wi-Fi. And so I went in there and my phone was so confused about connecting to Wi-Fi. It was, uh, Wi-Fi networks came up that I hadn't connected to for years. And I think they were, the signals were interfering and a lot of the vendors were pretty disgusted about, <laughs> I guess, I guess vendors had to pay $1,500 uh, to to have internet access in there, and then it didn't even work. So um, that's too bad. There were huge ladybugs on there. I really took this picture for my daughter, so I can show her the big ladybug balloons. <laughs> um, so 
This one I thought was funny, talking about the internet. The internet was just so bad in that exhibit hall. And then it's this company, Mobile Beacon, whatever they do, but I like the I like the sign because it really did feel like the internet was closed and I was so frustrated. But but certain corners of it I could get my 4G signal, and that's when I did some broadcasts from Little Bits and the, the three doodler pen. <laughs> so my first session, and it was a really good one, was LOL at ISTE. And it has uh, Elliot Soloway. He's been one of my heroes for a long time. There there he is in the picture. <laughs> uh, he's, he's such a jovial, funny guy. And him and Gary Steger and um, I'm going to forget everybody else's names on here. And I can't, I forgot his name, but uh, they, they kind of did up and it was like a roast. It was an ed tech roast. They would get up and tell some of their jokes, but they'd make fun of each other. And it was just an hour of a lot of fun. Though each time they had some sort of point or theme to the fun they were having. And I guess this is like their eighth year, 10th year they've done this at ISTE. So um, if you get to go next year and they get to do it again, LOL at ISTE is, is really well worth it. They, they even gave us let's see this next <laughs> they even gave us bags that we could put over our heads because the, his his theme was privacy and uh, there's you've got to strike a balance is, is what he ended up saying on that bag that he gave out <laughs> um okay so i took a picture of this booth because uh whenever i say it there, there's so many different ways you know do you, i i'd ask you to to comment but i don't know if you if you would spell it right how, how do you pronounce this is it Schoology or schoology? <laughs> well, I've been wondering that, and uh, it's been up for debate. And, and some people asked last year, and I guess they heard two different answers. So on their booth this year, the the people from this, you know, it's like it's like Edmodo. The second way, I yes, yes, Craig, you're right, schoology. And so they put the pronunciation right on their booth this year. Um, and so that's the way I had been saying it. I, I usually say things wrong, so I was surprised I was right. <laughs> but uh, Schoology is the definitive pronunciation straight from the company. And man, some of these booths, man, they spent a lot of money. So wandering the hallways, you see things like this. This, this was one of the shorter ones. I, I've seen longer ones that they had to double up. And another one I didn't get a picture of where she had the ribbons going off to the side and had three rows coming down. <laughs> oh man, I just saw a really long comment I didn't get a chance to read. I, you, you typed a lot and I didn't even get a chance to read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was I was too much into this. Oh wow, and I can, so um, National Board Certified Teacher. It's like homecoming, uh, leading the way. I don't even know where they get these. I didn't have any ribbons on mine at all. Yeah, it is a ribbon scarf. I have volunteer superpowers. My brain hurts. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Googler. I can't read some of them, but official superstar. I think people make their own and bring them too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into that for the next ISTE. I would like to give out some for something that have to get, say something silly. <laughs> this is your first time on Periscope? Welcome. Um, there's not a lot of tutorials. I, my website is learninginhand.com. And if you click live broadcast from ISTE, I wrote, I wrote some, some tips, but I have hopefully my plane ride home back to Iowa from Pennsylvania tomorrow. I'll get at least a good chunk of a post about my insights into Periscope both from, I guess, a viewer and from a broadcaster, so you can know a little bit about it. But it's so new, there's not, there's not a lot out there yet. But I have a little bit on my site to help you, help you get going. Um, let's see. Well, the, the closing keynote today was Josh Stumpenhorst. He's a, a history teacher in Illinois. He's been Teacher of the Year. He was a great speaker. And... Uh, at Ms. Victoria Olson did this, uh, uh, some visual notes for him. I don't know how she, she put this out. This was out like within an hour of the speech. So I don't know how she gets it spaced out so nicely and, and that, but she's, she's very, very good at it. And well, he, he had a, you know, a lot of things, uh, oops, um, 
it was really, you know, be proud to be a teacher, take some risks. It's about the kids was his major thing. Um, one thing that really resonated with me is that he said, you know, and, and I found this with Periscope too, is, you know, like, oh, my brain hurts. I learned so much. But then when somebody asks you, well, what did you learn? You really can't think of a single thing. <laughs> and it's true. Um, when I would ask people, like, what did you, what did you learn in the session you went to today? Oh, oh, it was good stuff. Um, it's the details, but that's why, uh, yeah, I think she does these by hand. Um, but no, they gotta be digital cause it has the water coloring in it. We'll have to, we'll have to tweet her. Uh, Ms. Uh, Victoria Olson, um, and ask her how she does it. Uh, yeah, it's too perfect. It couldn't, it could this be on paper? I don't know. I, no, no, I'm really studying it. <laughs> I don't even know what app she uses. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, I so uh, Josh had to stop and and use a website I've used. I use a lot in workshops for teachers called um, FutureMe.org, where you get to schedule uh, an email to go out into the future to yourself, and it's a great reflective piece. It kind of reminds you later, and you say, you know, send it the first day of school, or you know, sometime when you think you could, you want to see this stuff. Yeah, for, for the, the visual notes that we see here, Paper by 53 is great. Um, I, I, just because I'm fam more familiar with it, I like Notability. Uh, it doesn't have as many artistic things in it, but I love in Notability when I draw, I can resize and move stuff. And I would guess that's what she did here, because I just can't imagine that you would, you would leave just enough space. <laughs> Penultimate, that's another good one. So uh, another thing about that closing keynote, and I guess I really haven't made it to many ISTE keynotes, but they ran it like a like a late night talk show. They had a band, and they had somebody, you know, they had three ISTE board members kind of do some bantering between introducing it. They had one Ignite speaker, and then they they spoke to a superintendent in the Philadelphia area, and then but the band played in between. Uh, so they broke it up. They broke it up pretty nicely, but. Uh, for Josh's keynote, I would say, man, so many people went home early. Um, they went home you know, even before lunch, and I think that's because of flights and things. But there, there were not many. There was, let's, let's say it this way: there were a lot of empty seats in that in the huge auditorium for the for the closing session because a lot of people just left. Even my last session um, that was at one fifteen, I had a handful of people in it. It was just, yeah. People come Monday and Monday and Tuesday and leave, and you know, two two days that's enough. That I mean, that's that's a good amount of, of learning that you can do. Okay, more pictures uh, from the vendor hall. Um, squirrels. They used to be called air squirrels, and uh, you know them for reflector, which used to be called reflection. I uh, wanted to do uh, a periscope from their booth, but they are in. I don't. Their Wi-Fi was terrible around there. <laughs> Um, oh, and they were on Periscope, weren't they? Yeah, I use them all the time. They they are uh, good stuff. And, and and now, if you if you haven't uh, looked into their newest update of Reflector Two, it's not just an AirPlay receiver; it's a Chromecast receiver and um, Miracast. So you could get um, you can send Windows, you can send Mac, you can send. Chromebooks and Android all to one computer running Reflector. And you can have like up, like up to eight of them showing at once. Uh, good question. Did anybody object to Periscope? I, there, there was, out of all the people I talked to, there was one person who said no. Um, they're kind of shy around the microphone. Um, and there was another one. I was trying to do a pre-show before my session this morning. The internet was terrible, so it didn't work out. But I asked the whole group. I said, I'm going to do a little 10-minute thing before we get started. And I I was asking them what they wanted to learn and what they knew about the topic, which was images. It was it, I, I was really excited to try that. Uh, but the internet didn't work. But I just had one person who said he, he didn't want to be on camera. So I was just going to stick to the other side of the room. Um Okay, so in the, in the exhibitor hall, this is uh, ESDAC in Kansas, who they have a lot of great speakers who work out of there. And so you probably recognize this guy. He's the artist, um, Kevin Honeycutt. And so he designed this whole thing and it was like, 
unlike any other booth there. Like, you could see the, the, it was black and white and drawings, and it was really nice. It was really nice. Yeah, so if if you can't be filmed when you're when you're at ISTE, you're in the you know there could be several reasons, but witness protect, protection program or um, or you're not supposed to be there or you're supposed to be somewhere else. <laughs> Kevin's ADD makes you look tame. Yeah, he has a lot of a lot of energy. He is he is really cool. I got to see him um, one night and I I didn't even I thought I had a picture with him, but I may not have put that into this library here. And there's there's Ginger and some of their other people. So they just had a nice little lounge there. Uh, then Steelcase was there. You know, furniture and classroom design seem to be one of the big themes there. So of course Steelcase is there. And I just thought this was funny. It was like these businessmen were having their meeting right right then and there, in right inside Steelcase. But they, I like the colors they have. And this right here is like you could sit in it, like. That's creepy. Oh, that's a, there's a person in there. <laughs> you can see his hand. <laughs> it's, it's not a severed finger. It's just that this is a dark uh, material covering the back. <laughs> yeah, Kevin was performing at the Hard Rock. And um, he had a friend there who had this really long goatee beard. Um, I had never... I had never tugged on a on a beard before, but Kevin insisted I do it. And then when you tug on this guy's beard, then then he neighs like a goat. <laughs> that was a thing. <laughs> Why is there a covering on this on the inside? I'm not sure. Um, let me see. I have another angle of it. This is this is the other side. So maybe just for a little privacy, if you're using this in the classroom, or that's <laughs> where they hide the bodies. These chairs are neat because they they're they're balance, kind of balance balls, but you can also make them go up and down. Um, and then this lady, I don't know if she thought I was trying to take her picture. I wasn't. Just another thing that I saw a lot, so I thought I'd take a picture of were all sorts of different kinds of cases. Um, people were selling iP iPad cases, computer cases, but just a lot of iPad cases I saw. I walked right by because I wasn't so excited about those, but... Um, I took a picture just to remind me in the future, like, this is what was it, ISTE. <laughs> um, I should have taken a video of this guy. I didn't stop at this booth, but this robot was moving and waving, and he had, like, neon lights on him, so that was cool. Oh, it is a good company? Get teaching? Good, good. Um, I just didn't stop because I was on my way somewhere, but I took the picture. Yeah, Steelcase is the manufacturer of those chairs. It's expensive furniture, but it's neat stuff. Um, and then I just had to take a picture of this because it kind of reminds me of my childhood. Uh, you see the, the name of the company? It's a Hyper Studio. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to stop and talk to them, uh, but it's, it's Roger Wagner's Hyper Studio. So I don't, he bought the rights to it or, or something. And then the little tagline is, because you make things, <laughs> which I like. It's short and sweet. But uh, if you look at it, it's kind of reminiscent of, of old hyper studio uh linking items together you know we could do a lot of this with with, with other tools now of um uh, using even uh, keynote powerpoint can do so much of this but uh they, but it's available i don't know if it's just mac or what but they they're still hyper studio <laughs> they have they have a booth that was your first multimedia software yeah <laughs> I'm not sure, but I just, I think that's Roger Wagner. But like I said, I was just walking by and took a picture. <laughs> um, I took this because uh, I'm, I'm kind of into making info pics where you kind of enhance an image, make it look cool, put some text on top. And so I always give away a sticker. If you come to a session of mine, I mean, I have the sticker printer and I have just printed, you know, thousands of stickers in my lifetime. <laughs> but uh I just I threw this one in there because I well I like I like the sticker and from my session this morning if you uh, would like to check it out there's some videos and stuff learninginhand.com slash 1000 but everybody who came to my room got a sticker and they can put it on their notebook uh, uh, it was yeah Craig it was so nice to meet you at Miami Device too did you get any of my stickers from there I took stickers to Miami Device. <laughs> 
Yeah, photo funny I was in my session this morning too. And that's how I advertise my session with some of those fun photo funny uh, things. Yeah, pictures. So, and then I use I use uh, Pixlr to give it this texture that because it was just a picture of these on my on my table here, and then uh, I used Word Swag to put that on there. <laughs> my Periscope is your morning PD. Great. I hope you. I I love. It has a lot of great movie making stuff. In, in my broadcast from this morning. I, I really I really like this morning. It's like every day got better. Uh, let's see, here's a, another info pick I made. The, this session I went to the other day was called Hacking Keynote and it was by uh, Adam Bello and Dean Shiresky. And when I talked to Dean, he said, you know, really, he, he proposed this session just because he wanted to see how Adam makes his, uh, how he makes his keynotes. Because uh, he does some really complicated animation, he'll he'll have like hundreds of slides for an hour talk, and so he kind of took us behind the scenes of how he makes some of it. But one of the things, and I used Insta Alpha for for a long time, but I wanted to make an info pick from this session. So uh, just showing that you know with Insta Alpha you can take this and just get rid of that white background, so you have there's no more ugly white boxes. For years I stuck with. Uh, just white backgrounds on my on my slides because I didn't want white boxes. <laughs> you have white slide, you don't have to worry about the white boxes. Now I can be more colorful. Um, well, Instant Alpha has been around for for years now, but uh, I can be more colorful because uh, the white boxes are not an issue. Uh, Keynote is Mac and oh, it's Instant Alpha. Now you can do Instant Alpha on the iPad and iPhone as well. And then PowerPoint um, has its own kind of, they don't call it Insta Alpha, but they do have an alpha uh, kind of thing where you can remove backgrounds too. So, uh, but then so much of the clip art and things I get nowadays are, are, are PNGs with a transparent background already. So it's not as much of an issue like it used to be. Um, then it was fun. I, I, a teacher came up to me and she, you know, she showed me what she did for stick around and, and I liked, uh, here, I had never seen somebody make a, a puzzle that it took her a while to do this, but the pieces are kind of go together like that as well. So I thought that was really neat. So I asked her if I could video that. <laughs> and so I did. Um, and but really, the I guess the, the highlight of my OC, I, as you might guess, is really periscoping. I'm Usually at ISTEs, I kind of like I just I just stay back and I and I watch and I am I'm not very assertive, but when I know that other people are watching and and want me to ask questions, it it, it helped me get out there. So somebody took this picture as I was periscoping before the hack keynote uh, uh, session. So I, the, you guys don't usually see me from that angle, and the periscope videos are still terrible. So and I know somebody posted this on. <laughs> on Twitter as they were walking by when, when I was interviewing one of the teachers from Mexico. So I thought that was, that was funny to, to see that. And uh, this, this was really fun, and, and somebody was able to capture this. It was when I was with, with uh, Wendy Wells, and she had never heard of Angela Myers before. And this is all archived um, in, on, in YouTube now. On, on my website, you can find it and on my YouTube channel. But she had never heard of Angela Myers, so we went up to Angela Myers and I said, you know, I, I want to introduce Wendy, and then can you tell Wendy what you're all about? And, oh, and can you take the microphone and tell, you know, Periscope people what you're all about? <laughs> and it was great. Yeah, I love that people were screenshotting the Periscopes because I like the, I like the, you get to see the, the hearts. On the YouTube version, you don't see the hearts or the comments, so it's not nearly as fun. And it was just great. And then uh, Jerry, the Cybrary man there, uh, he's really active on Twitter, so we got to see him. And it was just, it was just a lot of fun to to do that and and do it through through this rect this rectangular lens of of Periscope. And Angela is just, she's just so wonderful. And Wendy just kept saying, "I'm so glad that you let me meet her." Like, she she got chills down her spine meeting meeting her, and she had never heard of her before. Of course, the first thing Angela did was she she had she had me periscope her shoes, 
and Angela's big, big uh, hashtag is you matter. So um, shoes matter is also now another hashtag. <laughs> uh, so then this is the group and I had talked to a lot of them in the bloggers cafe. So we, we stood for another, another picture there. Jenny, the vertical video is really driving me crazy. I, I only think that Periscope will will change someday and let me do horizontal videos because this vertical is driving me crazy, particularly when I watch it back on YouTube. I'm like, these are these black bars that are driving me crazy. <laughs> uh, so the vertical video is definitely not by choice. And I have seen people who do Periscope, they, they turn it, they turn everything sideways. And that's fine if you're watching on a phone, but if you're watching on your computer, and then everything is sideways. So the app does not go sideways, Jenny. I, trust me, if there was a way for me to do it horizontally instead of vertically, I would. But um, so, you know, I, I turn what I have here. I mean, this looks good from my point of view, but now the chat is sideways and you have to now turn your phone and if you're watching on a computer which if you're on a computer you can't even participate in the in the chat anyway um then you've you've uh it's just i just think that periscope will update in the future i really hope so <laughs> yeah i've seen i've definitely seen them people doing them horizontally online but it just you know, yeah, it's, it's a no win. <laughs> uh, there, there's another one. I just love these screenshots. I saved a lot of these these screenshots and tweets that people made for this post I'm working on because um, it's just it's just so neat to see the star uh, the the hearts and I and I guess the, so the hearts are each color represents somebody dif different. So they're these these yellow ones are probably all from the same person because you like tap the screen a few times. And I love the hearts. Wow, I'm getting colorful hearts now too. Thanks. And then you know how like when you go to Twitter it tells you like how many how many tweets you've had, how many people you follow and your followers. What I like about Periscope profiles and maybe you maybe you've noticed this is it tells it says how much love you've gotten. So that's how many hearts. And I think I'm over 20,000 hearts now, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, keep them coming. I mean, we'll go to 30,000. Okay. And so this happened last night. Did anybody watch this one? Um, uh, Rashawn from Explain Everything and a couple of the, and uh, Piot from from Explain Everything. We we just sat in the lobby of this hotel at the Holiday Inn. Nobody else was there, and Rashawn had never seen uh, Periscope before. So he he at first I don't think he's kind of dismissive of it. And then when he saw that people were talking, he downloaded it. He was chatting and you know <laughs> at the same time. And then we did a game where we were drawing and explain everything, and we were just. You know, tell him about the development, you know, and I'm, I'm assuming from uh, from your point of view that uh, it was kind of like you were there with us, huh? Oh, the music. Yeah, <laughs> it's lobby music. <laughs> That's what was in the background. <laughs> so um so that, that's all the pictures I have to show you. It's just the, the last one to go through is is the most important one to me. And, you know, I left I left Sunday morning and I'll get home uh, tomorrow morning. So I've been, been away from my kids for a while. So, uh, I'm excited to get back to Connor and Ellie. So this is, this is the picture there. I, when I, when I get back home, uh, I'll ask them, maybe, maybe, uh, Connor and Ellie will like to do some Periscope broadcasts. <laughs> exactly. We did <laughs> on a soccer field, eating cheese steak, ice cream. You remember it. You remember every detail of that from the, from last night. That's funny. <laughs> so, so that's kind of my, my ISTE 2015. I have pictures from ISTEs from years ago, and you know, I, I didn't I can't call it up now. But honey, I was walking by one of the posters today, and it was you know the best apps for this or whatever, and and you know I took a took a picture, but I guess it didn't make it in here either. Um, but the, the I was going to go back and and during the Palm days when I was doing Palm Pilots, I had a, I had a poster and I was really proud of it. It was it looked like '60s Star Trek because on the Palm Pilots you could beam you could um, beam information back and forth and apps. So I called uh, Beam Me Up Scotty the best Palm apps for your students and and I, they were on the transporter pad. I'll get pictures of that. I'll, I'll have to tweet that out or something because it was it was pretty neat. <laughs> um. And then the other thing, it was in 2005, that ISTE, when Apple still had a presence at ISTE, they had a big booth. 
And that's when they introduced podcasting into iTunes. And that was a big deal. And my, my student's podcast is, is called Radio Willow Web. And it was one of only two K-12 podcasts in there at the time. And I remember walking by the Apple booth and, and seeing the podcasts up on the Apple screen. I thought, wow, this is great. <laughs> you have your palm with my apps? Just, <laughs> but you just got to get rid of those Danas. Yeah, those, 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 those Danas, they were like these keyboards that ran the palm operating system. Um, it's, they're probably way past their time now. <laughs> but that, that ISTE in 2005, I went around with an, with an iPod, and, I, and the iPods didn't have built-in microphones, so I had bought this microphone to put in it. It just so reflects what I've done 10 years later now with Periscope. And I went around and I interviewed some people and put that up on my blog. I'm going to have to dig those posts back up, too, because it is just, um, just so many parallels, uh, similar and different from 10 years ago. It, it's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely what a change. There was, there was no, no live, no live going on. Yeah, 10 years from now, Craig, it's, I can't even imagine it. What are we going to be doing? <laughs> you don't have to go to ISTE, you'll just have cardboard on your face, huh? <laughs> well, um, thanks, thanks for uh, joining me in this little uh, jaunt through, <laughs> through my pictures from ISTE. Yeah, well, we will. <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks for coming along uh, the ISTE experience with me. I really love the feedback that everybody gave me. Um, I I don't know if I would have um, done so so many broadcasts from it, but everybody kept, I mean, private messaging me, public messaging me, and just saying thank you so much. So, um, you know, my my goal in life is to be helpful, and I, if I've been able to do that through ISTE and, and help people who aren't there. Uh, uh, experience it a little bit and learn. I'm, I'm super happy. So, hello from Tucson. It was amazing. Good. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you pushed through the crowds with me and everything. Uh, I'm glad it was great. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got barely any sleep last night, so I'm going to be going to bed soon because my flight is at 545 in the morning and I, and I got to work out the math at what time I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just missed it. You'll have to watch the replay. These, uh, these are all my, not all my pictures, but some pictures from ISTE, and I just went through them as a chance to, to talk about ISTE and, and, and relive uh, the last few days. So, yeah, sweet dreams, everybody, and uh, I'll see you later.